pop accounts. You can forward your email to another account, and you can set auto replies uh, like out of office. And you can also get help and support. All right, so that does it for the email. So you can see here I've got a bunch of different um, contact folders, you know, depending on how I have my contacts sorted. Over here I have contact names, and over here is the contact card. If I wanted to create a new contact, I'd click that, and that would actually allow me to use the template. If I wanted to edit a contact, I could choose the contact and click the edit button. I could delete it using this. You can also use the actions menu here, create a new contact, select all, delete. Email the contact, so you just choose them and click email. Print that, import or export. For preferences, you have sorting preferences and how you want the address and the phone layouts to be. Also, you can search. So you can search and then find contacts that match that search criteria. Calendar. So you can see uh, you have all your different calendars on the side here. You can choose which ones to show and not show. If you add contacts here, they get pushed out to your iPhone almost immediately, but they will not take place into your iCal for about 15 minutes, uh, something I've learned. You can also uh, view it by day, by week, by month. You can change your month here, go forward, go backward. Click on today if you've if you've surfed away from today. You can click on today and it'll take you there. You can also click on the days over here. You can add a new calendar or a new calendar group, and you can also show and hide the mini calendar over here. You can add a new event, new to do, delete, go to today. You can go to a specific date. You can show your to dos. Uh, you can get calendar information like kind of a description, change the color. For preferences, you can show how many days per week, what day to start on, what uh, your day starts and ends on, show how many hours at a time, show time and uh, month view. That So if you have an appointment at 12 p.m., it'll show up in the month view. Show uh, birthday calendars. Uh, date format, separators. Uh, turn on time zone support, hiding to-do items. All right, so photo gallery. So here, I don't have any photo galleries, so we're going to go ahead and create one. We'll go and we'll allow downloading of the entire album, uploading, and adding photos via email or iPhone. We can show file photo titles and email addresses for uploading photos. And I'm not going to hide it, and I'm going to go ahead and sync it with iPhoto. I have Aperture on here as well. So I'll go ahead and create it. So now I've created a demo account. I could click here or in the box to upload something. So we'll go ahead and upload the Stealth Mac logo. All right, so there you go. You can change uh, the settings of the album. If I wanted to, I could delete it. I could also rotate it. I can create a new album, select all, select none, show detailed information. That's the URL of it. Rotate, uh, set it as a key photo. So if you have uh, multiple photos in here, this would show up or whatever photo you chose as the icon for that album. You can delete it. You can auto hide the footer, which is down here. Um, you can also scale it. 
and then help and support. iDisk. So these are normal. I have created a demo folder here, put a picture in it. Uh, you can add a folder to the sidebar over here. You can get information. I have 16 meg of 10 gigabytes used. All right, so your home folder, you have a public folder, things you can put in. Um, you can upload. If I choose, I can download. So there's a picture. You can delete it. You can rename, duplicate, delete. You can uh, compress into a zip file or you can um, decompress a zip file. For preferences, you can show simple folder layout. That's about it. And now for the account settings. All right, when you log into your account settings, it's going to ask you for your password. All right, it tells you uh, when my subscription will renew, settings, if I wanted to upgrade the size of my uh, disk. I would click this. So it says I'm using 16 meg. I have 10 gig allocated to mail or to iDisk. I have uh, 63 megabytes to mail, and I can use 9.76 gigabytes. Really, I want to use like three. Storage of um, I have a group set up from the old dot Mac. So here's the settings for that. You can't make uh, groups anymore in MobileMe. Those are kind of left over from the dot .Mac. Account details, what kind of um, individual, when my renewal date is, how much per month I can do data transfer. Click on the options. Uh, automatically renew. I can upgrade it and how much it'll be. Billing information. Credit card and uh, phone number and address. Password settings, you can change your password here and your security information. Uh, storage settings. Personal domain. Now, if I had a personal domain name like uh, thestealthmac.com and I wanted to have it port to my .Mac account, uh, this is where I would add it. I'd put in the domain name and uh, continue along with this wizard. I don't have a domain name right now. Um, that might actually be a future episode, though. I would like to get a domain name to port to my .Mac account or MobileMe account. Secure certificate management, uh, iChat encryption. You can see I've had this account for a while. Uh, I can revoke it. Um, same thing with .Mac identity certificate. And then the news button. Basically, you can get MobileMe news and uh, tips from Apple on how to use your MobileMe service. So that does it for the web-based service. Next, we'll talk about loading this on a Windows machine. Okay, here I have a Windows XP machine. All I have loaded on it is uh, Outlook. So the first thing I want to do is go to Okay, so here I have a Windows XP machine. Actually, it's a virtual machine running on my MacBook Pro. But uh, all I have loaded on it is Outlook. And I want to go ahead and get uh, MobileMe running on Outlook so that my calendar, my contacts, and my email all come in and sync with my Windows XP machine. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to me.com. And here it says I should be running Safari 3 or later or Firefox 2 or later. Uh, I believe Internet Explorer 7 is supported as well, even though Apple doesn't say it. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, download Safari 3. 